In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make a thin strip jig that will give you perfect thin strips. And this is all the materials we'll use, and we'll be using a table saw and a drill press. Everything else is hand tools. To start this project off, I've got a one by two that's about 28 inches long. We'll take this over the table saw and we're gonna cut a strip that's three quarter inch thick, which should make this a perfect square. We'll only be cutting about 18 inches of this. That way it leaves our fingers free to be able to lift it up at the end so we're not pushing it all the way through. So I'll go ahead and mark out 18 inches. We want this part over here. We don't want this shorter part. This line will basically tell us that when we get to this part, we're gonna stop. Again, I'll go ahead and set this so that I'm at three quarters of an inch. And then I'll use a ruler here just to make sure. Now I'll go ahead and cut up to that line. And there it is with a cut. I'll take a handsaw and I'm gonna cut right on that line. I'll cut three lengths of wood that are three inches long. And that's with a three quarter inch by three quarter inch piece. Now that we've cut these three pieces, they're gonna to come together like this. We'll drill a hole going this way and a hole going this way. We'll go ahead and make a mark at three eighths here, as well as three eighths on the other side. I'll use a carpenter square now and draw that line across. Again, we'll find the three eighths and that's right there. We'll go ahead and use an awl. We'll drill these out of the drill press with a quarter inch drill bit. Now we'll take the scrap piece of wood that we had left over and we'll take our three pieces and we're gonna press them together like that. We'll add a clamp to the top here. And we'll add another clamp on this side. So we're just basically clamping this up really well. It's important this is all square. And now we'll take it to the side of our bench. And here I'm gonna add another clamp. We'll add a piece of tape at two inches and that'll be our depth gauge. We'll go ahead and drill each one of these holes. We'll loosen up this first clamp here. We'll add just a little bit of glue around the hole that we made. So just a little bit here and over here. And then we'll add some glue inside each hole. I'll go ahead and put the block back on and I'll make sure it's squeezed together really good. We are gluing against the end grain, which is a terrible thing to do, but we're reinforcing it with dowels. So that's a good thing. I added some glue to it and I'll just go ahead and put it in. I'll cut this off after the glue. I don't want to get any glue on this. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll give this about 20 minutes to dry and we'll come back. Now that it's been about 30 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my clamps. I'll go ahead and take out the center piece here. I'm gonna make sure that it does not get glued in. We'll let this dry a little bit longer. With this extra piece that we cut off earlier, we're gonna measure in three inches. Now we want to connect the diagonals to find the center. We'll go ahead and mark the center here and we'll drill that out with a quarter inch drill bit. We'll be using a quarter inch bolt that has this cone shape on the top. It's gonna to slide through, but we wanna have a little bit of a cone shape in the wood. There's a lot of ways that you can do this. You can use one of these little guys. This is a deburrer and one of these would work. I'm only gonna go down low enough that the head of the bolt is flush with the top of the wood. And there we go. We'll go ahead and set our fence so that's three eighths of an inch away from the side of the blade over here. The side with the cone shape, I'm gonna face that towards the fence and I'm gonna cut past this line here. So here's my pencil line, I'm just gonna draw that onto the top. When I cut, I'll cut right up to that line and then pull it back out. I'll go ahead and cut this back piece off and I wanna do it right at the mark that we made, the three inch mark. There's the top with a cone shape. We just cut the bottom part off. Again, with the cone shape down, we're gonna measure two inches 
from the edge. That's two inches from the edge. I'm gonna center this th as best as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's better that it's as close as you can make it. I wanna make the blade the center of this block. It looks like right about there is gonna be the center. I'm gonna cut up to that line and then pull back again. And that's what that looks like. My blade's about three quarters of an inch high. On the opposite side, it did not cut all the way up to the three inch mark. So that's kind of what we're looking for. I'll cut right along the three inch mark here. And this is our expansion bar that we're gonna need in order for this to expand so that it locks in the miter slot. We're gonna go ahead and widen this up a little bit more. I'm just making it so that later on it's a little bit easier to cause this to expand. Here's our bolt. There we go. Now that this is absolutely dry, I'll go ahead and cut the rest of this off. But before we go on, I need to talk to you about bolts. This is my original one that I made about, oh, two years ago. If I pull out the bolt, you can see there's a little piece of metal in here. It's actually a drill bit. And in order for me to get this piece of metal in here, I had to use a hacksaw to cut into this. This works incredibly well, but I don't know how important this actual bit right here is. I did find a brass cone head bolt that has a slot in the middle like that, so you wouldn't have to cut into it. But I'm not entirely sure that you have to put something in the center here to keep it from spinning around. It seems to me that when I put in my table saw and I put a knob on the other side of it, that it doesn't seem to want to spin. If you make one of these and in time, the inside of this becomes uh, really polished as, it's, as you use it. You might consider adding some kind of nail or something in the center here to prevent it from doing that. You can always go back to the Phillips. These are very easy to find. It's two inches long, quarter inch again. If you do decide to either use a hacksaw to cut in the center of it, or if you can find a flathead bolt like this, we'll just take a pin, cut off the loop, then you'll just insert it in the center and add some epoxy and let it cure. The one thing I need to explain about the expansion bar is that as you crank on the top of it, splits the wood open a little bit and it allows it to lock. But if you glue this into the cone point that we made, it will not be able to move at all. So it really needs to freely move inside of here. And if you find that it moves too much, like I said, you can always go to one of these pins. But I'm just trying to give you your options here because I don't want this to be something that fails on you in the future. Back here at the table saw, we'll put our expansion bar inside the miter slot here. We'll make sure that the cone shape that we made is facing downward. It probably isn't flush to the top of the table. Mine isn't. So I'll add two washers and that brings it up to the top. That's pretty flush. Mine moves around a little bit in the slot. So I've got a piece of aluminum here and I'll slide that behind it and that really makes it tight in there. That's what we're looking for. Now we'll take the part that we constructed already and we're gonna put it right on like that. We'll slide this extra piece that we started from. If you remember that X that I drew, we'll go ahead and put this on like this. We'll add some glue to this part here and here. Just gonna use a toothpick. I'll take this assembly here and I'll put it right on top. We want this to be parallel to the blade. So you can use a square and just kind of square it up. But I have two squares. I think that that works, I don't know, maybe better. And you'll wanna make sure that you're flush with the edge of the miter slot. When everything looks good, we'll go ahead and add some weight to the top. And we'll give that about an hour to dry. Now that this is dry, we're gonna add four screws to the expansion bar. I've got four number fours that are an inch long. I'll take my awl and I'm gonna make a mark here, as well as there, there, and there. Now I'll use the 7 64th bit with my drill press. Like I said, I'm only going down about an inch, so I'll go ahead and lock my drill press at about an inch. Because this wood is soft, I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to screw these in as doing anything else would cause it to possibly split. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little insert. I'll add some glue to a little thin strip of wood here and then I'm just gonna slide it inside of here. That will make it a little bit stronger on this side so that it matches the other side. We'll keep our block inside of here and we're gonna put it back in our miter slot. 
Now I'll take a steel ruler and I'm gonna put the beginning on the tooth on the inside towards our jig and I'm gonna find where four inches is. So right about there. Back here at the workbench, we're going to extend our four inch mark that we made away from the saw blade with a speed square. We'll go ahead and flip this over and now we'll focus our attention on the cone hole here. I'll take the quarter inch brad point bit that I used to drill the hole out originally and I'm just gonna put it right back inside the hole and mark the piece of wood below. Now we'll take a ruler and we're gonna put it on that mark and we'll go up to the one and one eighth and over here, we're gonna make a mark right at the start. We'll take our quarter inch drill bit and we'll find the center by putting it back inside the hole. The table saw blade now needs to be five eighths of an inch away from the fence. And that's this side right here. And when I make my cut, I'm gonna end at the very end of the circle here. And now we'll flip it over and do the exact same thing. And now that we're done, if we put the block back inside, you can see that hole below and I can slide it and it works out pretty good. I made that second hole here and as an alternative, you could just cut this out with a coping saw. You could also cut this out with a band saw, which would make it obviously a little bit cleaner. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible so that anybody can do it with the table saw. We're gonna go back to the block that we used to cut the expansion bar off, which is this piece right here. We'll set our table saw that it, so it cuts at a quarter of an inch. Get a mark here on, my, on the wood. It, we're gonna cut up to this mark, which is an inch and three eighths. Again, the three quarter inch part will be standing upright. We'll come to there, we'll get come to that point and then we'll pull it back. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this with a handsaw. I'll add a little glue on the inside here and then I'll slide this piece back in. We wanna make sure that it's flush on the back and flush on the sides. We'll give that a chance to dry and we'll come back. Now we'll go ahead and cut this at the four inch mark that we made and we're gonna cut on this side here. With this last little bit that we have, we'll measure over three inches and we'll make a mark. And we'll go ahead and cut this section off. We'll take the other piece and we'll set it right there. That'll give us something to hold on to. And we're just gonna cut that other section off. Now we'll add this hinge to both parts of the block here. One thing that's really important about this hinge is that it shouldn't have any play like this. This type of play is really bad. You don't wanna have this gap. The best thing to do would be to use a piano hinge. The problem with this is that the holes don't line up, which would mean that we'd need to go in and drill holes out. But I think I found a fix for this. This inch and a half hinge that I'm holding has three different knuckles. We've got the two knuckles here and the one knuckle in the middle. We'll take these two knuckles here and we're gonna put them up against our block that we created in the last step. We'll flip it over and we're gonna mark on this block where those knuckles are. So I got one there and I've got one right there. Go ahead and extend these a little bit like that. Now you could take a file and carve the outside sections here um, where the knuckles would go. You could do that. You could use sandpaper and if you're careful, you can use a chisel. But what we're basically gonna do is just grind it down a little bit. A slight bevel on where each one of those knuckles would go. And there. Now when we put the hinge up against it, it's causing the knuckles to be pushed back into the wood while the center knuckle is being extended as far as it can go. As you can see, there's no play. And then I'll put this back on. That center knuckle, it's gonna go right in the center. And then like I said, there's just no play now. The trick at this point is to make sure that we keep it tensioned as we screw it in. Um, I'm gonna use some epoxy because we don't want that to move. The other side is just gonna go on like that. Not a big deal. Because I absolutely don't want that to move, I'm gonna go ahead and add some epoxy now and then put a clamp on it. And yeah, we wanna be careful we don't get anything up inside there. 
the epoxy's on, I'll go ahead and push it in up against that middle knuckle there. I'm really gonna make sure that I squeeze that back because I don't want that to move. While that's doing its thing, I'll go ahead and take this out. With our three inch block, we're gonna measure an inch up and we're gonna try to find the center of the block, which is right about there. We'll take the base of this and we'll flip it upside down and we'll take our mark and put it inside of here like that. We'll center that up as much as we can. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. We'll take the quarter inch brad point bit and we're just gonna mark the top of the wood right where that spot that we made is. I've got a 5 8 compression spring here. Um, it's 1 and 1 16 inches long. If I'm able to find something online, I'll post a link in the description. They are really difficult to kit exact springs, but local hardware stores should have them. You want it to spring like this. It just needs to be enough that you can push it down. Again, this is 5 8 so I'm going to drill out with a 5 8 Forzner bit. And I'm only going to go down about 3 8 of an inch. Because we are using a Forzner bit, I'm going to add a clamp to the back of it which will give me more control. You could go with a different spring altogether with a different size. This is just the one that I use that seems to work. But you're not limited to what I've found. Three-eighths is the halfway mark on the block. You could probably go deeper shallower, but 3 8 should be just fine. And this should just fit right inside. I don't think you need any epoxy. My last one I made, I never used epoxy. I've had this for many years. It's never popped out. That should be enough. Epoxy to the other side. I waited a little too long with this. We'll put the spring part like this and then attach it to the front. We're gonna, of course, try to make this of course, we're gonna make sure that it's flush on the sides. Push it as far forward as we can, and then we'll put a clamp on it. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the spring. I drill out each one of these holes. I'm gonna use an awl, and I'm gonna find the approximate center. I've got a steel ruler. You can pick these things up anywhere. They are fantastic, one of my favorite tools. They go for maybe a couple dollars. I'm gonna use this so I don't have to measure the distance between my blade and the front of the jig. I'm using some clippers. I'm just gonna cut a little bit after the one inch mark. This is a little bit of an older one, so it's got a little bit of rust on it, but that's okay because it's gonna be used just for this jig. Make your own knob for this, or you could even buy one, but I'm gonna show you an even cheaper method. I'm just gonna use a wing nut. Now, if you've seen my videos, I like to make knobs, but you don't have to make one if you don't want to. To set my gauge, I'm going to put this all the way up to the blade. So that's touching the teeth of the blade, and that will be zero. I'll lock it down so that it stays right there. Another really nice thing about knobs is that it doesn't take as much to twist um, to lock it up. You're gonna be using a little bit more pressure with a wing nut. My ruler, the zero part, and I'm gonna put it right on that edge so that it's sitting on the line right across here. You could take this a step further and add a square and then make sure it's flush right here. And then you can bump your ruler up. And what I'll do is I'll add some epoxy and just let it sit there and harden and we'll be good to go. Still at absolute zero. I'll push it down a little bit and rub it in. I am absolutely perfect right there. I'll let that sit and cure and we'll come back. To use this, it's really simple. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna square up our board. Now that we know that both sides are parallel, we'll come over here to our jig, and let's say you wanna cut quarter inch strips with this. So I'll move it to quarter inch right there, and I'll lock it down. Next, I place it down against the table. I move my stock into place, unlock my table saw, 
and I push it up against the jig. Then I lock it, pull it back, I release this, you can either lift it up or just leave it where it is and make a cut. About 0.25, almost exactly. This is a really simple jig, it's easy to make and it is unbelievably accurate. If this is something that you might be interested in making, please let me know. I always love to get pictures and feedback from people.